The off season is when most of us start to plan our garden. And the winter time is also a perfect time for us to dig into some garden reading. I know I love reading garden books, especially ones that help me in my garden planning. So today I'm going to share with you seven of my top recommendations of gardening books. Many of these are strategic choices based on how you want to grow your garden. But if you're a brand new gardener, then option number seven is one I would recommend you start with. The first book I want to share with you today is The Pollinator Victory Garden. This book is by Kim Ironman, and she was actually on the Beginner's Garden podcast and talked about this book and some great ways that you can plan your garden to try to attract pollinators. That's a big thing, not only for obviously diversity and the health of your garden, but also if you struggle with pollination of some of your vegetables, like cucumbers, for instance, that's very common, attracting more pollinators can definitely help with that. I love the way that she lays out not only what you want to plant and what insects you want to attract, but also she's got some plans in the back that help give you an idea of how you can actually plan for a pollinator garden to help your entire garden endeavor. The next one I want to share with you is this book that I think needs to be on every organic gardener's bookshelf, and this is The Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook by Susan Mulvihill. She also was on the Beginner's Garden podcast, and it was chock full of great information. I liked reading this book in the off season because it enabled me to really slow down and think about the big picture of what I wanted in my organic garden and what I didn't want. I think sometimes when we save books like this for whenever the pests are here, sometimes we have a tendency to just skip through and just do the, the thing that will get rid of the pests. Well, the first section of her book I think is the most important, and that is the section that I recommend that you read in the off season. It will definitely help you as you plan a garden to be able to be as organic as you can be and also not be overridden with pests. But if you are watching this video and you are dealing with some pests, this has a great reference area where you can look by pest and then you can see what options that you might be able to have to control them. So definitely a book that I keep on hand and I highly recommend before you start planning your garden this year. The next book I'm going to recommend, I actually just have the digital version. So this is on my Kindle app and it's called Plant Partners by Jessica Wallazer. She's actually been on the podcast before with another fantastic book that she has, Attracting Beneficial Bugs to Your Garden. But I love this book, especially for planning your garden because it's talking about science-based companion planting ideas. I love the research that she's gone to in this book to make it where you can parse through some of the like fables or things that aren't tested. And instead she uses science backed research on which companions are best for which purposes. I made so many notes of different possibilities in my garden planner so that I could take some of these and actually work them into my garden plan. Plus, this is a fun read. I think I read it in like two days and I'm not a fast reader. This is one I would definitely get your hands on. My number four recommendation is actually two books, but it's the same concept. So I'm kind of squeezing a two for one in for you. And the first one is Foolproof Preserving. If you are doing any kind of canning, this is a book that I recommend. Now, it's not necessarily a beginner's guide to canning like the ball book, which I recommend that one as well. This one is the ball book, complete book of home preserving. This is one I would recommend for you if you're a brand new canner or preserver. This gives a lot of information that's very basic. And I still use a lot of those recipes in my canning today. But I like this book because it has some different recipes and every one that I've tried has been fantastic. There's a salsa recipe in here that is pretty much my go-to. And then I think my biggest win from this book is how to can pickles in a way where the pickles stay crunchy. This uses a method of tested and approved canning that I'd never tried before I had gotten a copy of this book. So this is definitely one that I recommend if you have any plans to can. Along those lines, I also recommend a new book that I got this year, 
and it is the complete guide to pressure canning. I do love the Ball Blue Book for basic canning recipes, but this just has so much more. One thing that I really enjoyed about this book this year is that it had a couple of different spaghetti sauce recipes. One had lots of vegetables from my garden that were just kind of ending my season like zucchini and, and that kind of thing that actually went into the spaghetti sauce. My kids loved it and had no idea that it had so many vegetables in it. So that was a total win. And then it also had a spaghetti sauce with meat in it, which I thought was a great option. So these were two big wins for me, but then it also gives instructions on how to can dry beans, which was a huge help. I had a hard time finding the information on that in other sources, but if you do any kind of pressure canning or plan to do that, I would recommend that you get a copy of this. Now you may wonder why am I suggesting canning and preserving recipes when you're planning your garden. And the reason is that I think deciding what you want to can and preserve if you're going to do that is a big step in planning your garden. If you know you're going to want to can green beans or beans or spaghetti sauce or whatever, then I like to plan my garden based on the ingredients I'm going to need. It's a pet peeve of mine. I can't stand canning things that I have not grown myself. So I want to make sure that if there's a recipe that I want to can, I want to grow as much as I can out of my garden for that recipe. And that's why I think getting your hands on some of these recipe books is a great idea in planning your garden. Plus, it just is really fun to look through all these possibilities. Just imagine your shelves being lined with all of these new products that you grew and put up yourself from your garden. Along those lines, and these are another bonus ones, if you plan on freezing or fermenting, these are the two that I recommend, Freeze Fresh. Crystal was on our podcast last summer. I highly recommend you check that out if you're interested in freezing. This would be great if you're a beginner. And then fermented vegetables, if you're interested in any kind of fermenting, this would be a great one. I got this one for Christmas one year, and it really did help me decide what kind of vegetables I was gonna grow based on what I might wanna ferment. So a couple other bonus books for you here in the subject of planning your garden for preserving. This next book that I would recommend is if you are interested in planning a garden for herbs of medicinal value, this is The Healing Garden. This is a stout and heavy book with information like I have never seen in another book, especially when it comes to these herbs. The beginning part of the book actually talks about how to grow these herbs that you wanna grow. And then the end of the book takes a plant by plant look at how to grow different things and how to use them, what they're good for in whatever way you want to use them. It's such a fun book to read too. And you've just got these beautiful pictures of the different herbs that you can grow and how to grow them and how to use them. This is a fantastic book if you're wanting to dive into medicinal herbs in any way, highly recommend. Number six is a book that I've had for a few years, but I feel like it's a great go-to and this is Vertical Vegetables. And Amy was actually on the podcast several years ago and this is a great book if you're wanting to do any vertical gardening. It gives you ideas on different trellises that you can make and construct. It also shows you which vegetables need which type of trellis methods. Beans don't grow with the same method as peas do, for example, same with winter squash. And so this just gives some great ideas on how to incorporate vertical gardening in your garden. And whether you have a big garden like I do and I have lots of vertical elements, or you have a small garden where growing vertically is a essential to get as much as you can out of a small space. I would highly recommend this because as you're planning your garden, you are going to want to plan for different trellises and those trellises need to be in certain locations so as not to shade other vegetables and that kind of thing. This book is a great resource for it. And finally, I mentioned if you are a brand new gardener, then I would recommend getting a gardening book that is geared toward beginners. And for that, I've got you covered. This is Vegetable Gardening for Beginners. This is my book. I wrote it in 2020, it's when it came out, and it will give you a primer on growing your own vegetables from the beginning parts of planning all the way through to the end where we've got really easy to read and understand the different growth habits of different crops. These are divided up into cool season crops, warm season crops, herbs, that kind of thing. And this will give you an idea of when to plant, how far apart to plant, and what type of specific needs certain plants might need. So this would be one that I would definitely keep on your bookshelf if you're a beginner, because it's always good to have that basic information 
handy. Now I'll give you a couple of bonus books too if you're a beginning gardener because there are lots of great books out there for beginners. Mine is just one I wanted to recommend, but there are a couple others that I think are really informative and helpful in their own way. The first one is The Vegetable Gardening Handbook by Joe Lample. Joe Lample has so many years of garden experience, but he has a way of making gardening accessible and understandable for the beginner. And besides his method of organic gardening, which I highly recommend, and it's pretty much what I do, he explains all that in the beginning. And then he also has sections in the back where he focuses, I don't know what it is on my accidentally getting eggplant on here. I really don't even grow eggplant all that much, but he has these uh, pages that dive into specific vegetables as well. He gives a lot more detail here on those specific vegetables. So this was a great one to have handy. I also love this book by Gary Polarchik. You may know him from his YouTube channel, The Rusted Garden. He has also been on the podcast actually when this book came out, The Modern Homestead Garden. Now, if you're a beginning gardener and you don't have a homestead, you just have a garden, this is still a great book for you. I love his no-nonsense approach to so many things. There's so many commonsensical ways he explains things. And so this is one I would also recommend if you're a beginner. Okay, so I gave you a little more than seven, but hopefully these give you some inspiration and ideas of some garden books you would like to read throughout the winter. And the thing that I want you to keep in mind, and I hope that you saw this by the selections I made, is that garden book reading is enjoyable. It's something we all like to do in the winter, at least I hope you do but it can also be very strategic because what you wanna do is you want to read these books with a pen and paper in hand and take notes of all the ideas that you get. Trust me, you're not gonna remember them all, so write them all down. I like to write them down in my Complete Garden Planner. This is my own creation because I couldn't find a garden planner that had everything that I wanted, but one thing that I like to do is I like to take this garden planner and I like to make notes as I am reading, and then I'm able to incorporate that in my garden and plan later. So whatever garden planner you use or whether you just get a notebook, make sure and write down the insights that you get as you're reading through these books so that you're actually able to put these things in place when you start planning your garden. Garden planning is my favorite part of winter and I can't wait to share with you more of how I do that in future episodes. So make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, especially heading into the new year. And if you want more videos and more podcasts, consider subscribing to my Patreon community where you get bonus episodes of podcasts and videos, live Q and A's and more every month.